What is up, everybody? Today we're talking about John Wick 3, and this is going to be a spoiler-free review. So if you haven't seen the movie yet, that's okay. Getting right into it, I'll say I absolutely loved this movie. And if you liked John Wick 1 and you liked John Wick 2, then I've got to think you're going to feel the same way. And that's because, once again, they've executed the same concept, but they find enough new stuff to bring into the mix to keep things fresh and interesting. Now, you might think this is a sequel. We've got to go bigger. We've got to go more complicated. And there's a little bit of that, but mostly the way they keep things fresh is by getting creative. They find creative new ways to back John into a corner. They find creative new ways for John to take out his foes. And I would say most of the first 20 plus minutes of this movie are pure that. It's you seeing John pick up an object and use it in an interesting way. It's John taking some interesting approach to taking down an enemy and you saying, oh, we're going to do that now. Okay, hell yeah. And there's plenty of that in this movie. Now, overall, I would say there's sort of three really positive ingredients that work really well in this movie. First is a little bit of what we talked about already, and that's there's a visceral joy in watching somebody competently perform a task, especially when they're backed into a corner like John Wick often is. And every movie, he's taking on a bigger and bigger scope of, uh, of enemy, so it becomes even more impressive. Now, the other piece to that is the cinematography highlights what we just talked about, which is that unlike a typical action movie you see today, you don't have the quick cuts. Keanu Reeves is doing all of his own stunts, so you are really in the moment, and that just amplifies the joy of watching John beat his enemies. I'll also say the humor that we're used to from the first two John Wick films is present throughout this movie and works pretty consistently. Uh, one of the other big ingredients in this film is uh, the world building. So the first two John Wick movies introduced a lot of new concepts where you learn about this culture of assassins. John Wick 3 is no different. It does a great job of referencing a lot of the mythology established in the first two movies and then brings in a few new ingredients, which I won't talk about here to keep it spoiler free. Before we get into any of the stuff that didn't work in this film, I want to give a shout out to Halle Berry. This feels like one of the first times we've seen anyone besides Keanu Reeves highlighted as a really competent and skilled fighter, maybe on the level of John Wick. Halle Berry is given plenty of time to shine in this film. She does a great job, and I would watch a spinoff about her character, which is saying a lot considering how invested we are as viewers in the John Wick character that anybody else can really stand out in that way. I'll also say she brings a couple of dogs with her. If you've seen the trailer, then you know they get a little bit in the action. That works really well and does a lot in terms of amping up the creativity and keeping these fight scenes from getting too repetitive. Now, on the flip side, the things that didn't work as well in this movie, I would say the emotional stakes, really the primary emotion that you'll feel if this movie works for you is, hell yeah, just as you watch John take out all of his enemies. Beyond that, really the only emotional foundation that I had in this movie is what I brought in from the previous films. And that's okay. It is a sequel, so there's an understanding that you're going to bring some emotional investment into the character that's pre-existing. But I did see some attempts in this film to make us feel something, especially when it came to the supporting characters, like Lawrence Fishburne, for example. And even Halle Berry has a little bit of a backstory they get into, which I, I saw some attempts at emotional stakes here for those characters. Most of that fell flat for me. I liked the supporting cast, but mainly as interesting characters and as interesting ways of progressing the plot. But in terms of emotional stakes, really all I had is what I already felt for John going into this movie and just 
again, how awesome it is to watch him in these battles and watch him struggle and ultimately overcome in these fights against his enemies. Uh, I'll also mention that uh, there was one moment in the first John Wick that really bothered me. And it's a trope that happens in a lot of over-the-top action movies. And that's what basically comes down to one character has a gun, the other doesn't. Character with the gun has a clear advantage, but he puts the gun down and says, let's fight like men. And that's just, uh, it's just a logical gap that takes me out of the movie. And I know it's ridiculous to say, considering the kinds of crazy things that happen in these movies, but you're behind this character because he's so smart, because he's so competent, and then he gives up an advantage for, for what, for honor? Uh, and that doesn't exactly happen in this movie, but there is a moment where something like that happens, and as always for me, it takes me out of the moment. Enough that it's it was worth calling out as something that, that frustrated me in John Wick 3. I'll also point out that for the most part, even as some of the fights in this movie and the action scenes can get pretty lengthy, generally they find ways to keep changing things up and keep things creative so you don't get bored, or they keep the fight scenes short and sweet, but there were one or two action sequences. There's one in particular I'm thinking about that goes on a little long, starts to get a little repetitive, and started to lose me a little bit. But for the most part, that wasn't a problem. And the last thing I'll mention before we wrap it up is I don't think any of the John Wick movies have had a particularly interesting villain. You know, the, the interesting part of John's enemy has kind of been this vague concept of the high table. There's this whole world that's interesting, but the actual people he's facing off against, the actual characters, I don't think have been all that interesting. John Wick 3 does some creative things with the villain, but still doesn't quite get there. Overall, though, if you can't tell, I absolutely love this movie. And I would strongly, strongly recommend it to any action fans, especially if you were a fan of John Wick 1 or John Wick 2. And thankfully, John Wick 4 has already been announced, and I can't wait for it. There's also a TV show coming out called The Continental, a spinoff of the movie. And uh, for that one, I'll say I'm cautiously, I don't know if I'd say cautiously optimistic, I'm cautiously curious. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the little bell icon to make sure you get notified whenever we come out with more videos like this one.